All right, let's talk about the biggest liars in the world. Now, these guys, uh, they are not Enron executives. They are not friends of Bernie. They're golfers. Any of you try to play golf? <laughs> you know, you're honest if you say you try to play golf, I think. <laughs> the reason I start the presentation this way, and I actually start the book this way, is to root the discussion in numbers in what people might perceive to be raw data. And they think, well, OK, yeah, it, it, charts can be misleading, but just show me the numbers. And just give me the bottom line, and I'll, I'll figure it out from there. Well, a little bit of time spent on what golfers do will, I think, help disclose why that might be fallacious thinking. Here's a, a very routine set of scores, and it comes out to a, a, a reasonable average. And we're talking about the average or the arithmetic mean. The mathematicians use arithmetic mean because the word average is somewhat imprecise. But an arithmetic mean means what we all know commonsensically to be an average, and we'll look at some of those. So here's another set of scores, uh, pretty clustered around the same value, and 83.4 is a pretty reasonable uh, result for that. However, uh, here's another set of scores. And what we have right here is a piece of what you guys would call anomalous data. So what does that mean? You see this, especially if we see this in real world data, We'll try to make meaning out of it immediately. We go, oh, well, you know, he must have had a hand injury that day, or oh, he was playing a rough course, or, uh, you know, we're going to make excuses because obviously, look, because it's borne out by the fact that the second piece of anomalous data looks like, well, the hand must be healing. But did I say these scores were all from the same player? We have a, we have a predilection to, to make a pattern here. As, as though this is the oldest piece of data and this is the newest piece of data, reading right to left. I didn't tell you that either. What, what possible basis do we have to start making up a story about, about this? But golfers are doing this all the time. So let's look at some other ways. OK, here, here's something that is, we do in business every day. Just throw out the highs and the lows, OK? They're anomalous. They're just anomalous. It's like measurement error, you know? But we didn't calibrate the equipment. There's got to be some reason. Though clearly, these 70s are, are, are on, the, on, the, on the game because those, are, uh, those look, look reasonable. Or you can say, all right, well, I don't have enough of the good data. I'll just take the bad data. I'll take the extremes. I'll take the high, and I'll take the low. The midpoint of those, that's got to be someplace in the ballpark. Just as unreasonable, but perfectly valid technique. Or now we're starting to get a little bit trickier. We can start using other algorithms, other ways of data reduction to arrive at what we think the truth might be. This is done a lot in demographics and statistical sampling. And, you know, the, the election returns right before, you know, CNN, whatever, is I'm going to use the median. I'm going to find out how many members of the data population have the most popular value. I just want to see what's popular. So if I'm clustered, you know, up toward the highs, then it's like, OK, well, even though the overall average is low, because I've got some really abysmal lo low scores, most of the time I was shooting higher. So that's my score. Now here's one that you may actually find familiar. Uh, I called a moving average. I think in your uh, results it's called a rolling average. But this, in, in this case, uh, we're trying to see what the golfer's uh, long-term performance is. And we're trying to find a trend in the data. And so we wait three games. Then we start measuring using a four-game running average. So the, the raw data is across the top and the four game average is running along the bottom. And you can see that it greatly smooths out the, the data and makes a much prettier story. Uh, and his, his, his scores are generally improving. OK. And if you can't massage the data enough, 
to get to the point where you've got a good story to tell management next time. You can invent a uniformly applied correction factor. You can recognize an unfair disadvantage. You can level the playing field. And you can give it a really clever name that invites sympathy and call it the handicap. <laughs> what, what connection with reality does that possibly have? Except to make golfers ante up <laughs> to their greens fees so that they'll go out again. It's not a measure of performance at all. The goal of this presentation is, re and, and the book also, obviously it's not a book about how to lie with charts. There was a book called How to Lie with Statistics by Daryl Huff back in the early 1950s, and it had pretty much the same intention, was to tell people, illustrate how not only you're being lied to all the time, probably by people who are doing it unintentionally, and how you're probably doing it yourself. Thank <laughs> you.